shows me to go stick in my nose and stuff. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Amber. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look and testing out the items that come in the February Ipsy bag. For anyone who's unaware, Ipsy is a makeup subscription service that will send you four to five sample or full-size makeup products per month. The subscription is $10 for the basic subscription, unless you get like Ipsy Plus, which guarantees five full-size products. I personally just have the regular subscription. Let's go ahead and take a look. Open that up, pull out. Ooh, look how cute that is. Lipstick kisses, most likely to go with the theme of February. It's Valentine's Day, which is why I look super cheesy right now with the flower crown and the old lady flower sweater. It also comes with the card, which I've been noticing lately. Ipsy has been giving larger cards. It actually gives you a little description for all of the products you have in your bag that month. Uh, Ipsy has not done this regularly. I started noticing it actually just last month they did a giant like fold out pamphlet and now this month there's just the one card but it still tells you everything about all of your products. Before it would usually just give you a little card like half this size, a little tiny square that would give you a bunch of different coupon codes and stuff and then like talk about the theme of the month for whatever month it was except they don't really have themes. It'll just sometimes be like oh you know a uh, reference to like if there's any holidays that month or whatever and then they'll give you coupons for like the Ipsy website and they might describe one of the products but just like a highlighted product not all of them. So that's kind of fun you'll know uh, what's in it before opening it. I do like that simply for my video purposes I know what to wear makeup wise before I start and then what we'll be doing as the video goes along. Today I think we are going to be unboxing an item and then testing it out individually as we go along. So let's get to it. Take the bag, open that up. And the first product we bring out is from MAC, which I personally only use and purchase cruelty-free products. And MAC is not a cruelty-free company. I will test out the product today but then I will most likely either pass it along or since it seems like it's a very sample size there might not even be enough to really pass along after today so we'll open that up we have the little I believe it was a foundation and then there's uh the foundation and then it's like an application sponge and this is the Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation in NC20. It is very light. Hopefully it matches my skin tone. It is a powder foundation and I'm not going to lie. I don't really have much experience with powder foundation. Granted, I've only really started using foundation in like the last year. Back in high school, I didn't really care enough to put in that much effort or the money to like purchase foundations. And then uh, in the last like year or two, I started getting uh, drugstore foundations. And then now that I have Ipsy, I've gotten one or two uh, higher end foundations, which I will probably be sticking with because that Amazonian clay though... So I haven't used a powder foundation since like middle school. So let's go ahead. Let me get out a palette so I can use a mirror. And then I think I'll just be using my old school Kat Von D palette because it has such a large mirror. So we will be going in. I'm just going to use the application or the applicator sponge that they gave me to see how well that that works. Product comes off fairly nicely. We'll do a second swipe and I don't think you can really tell on camera. You can barely tell in person. So we're gonna go uh, and just continue applying that and see how it works out. Alright, so the best foundation tip I've ever gotten 
was to not apply product directly to your nose to do your whole face and then just use the leftover product that's on either your brush or your beauty sponge and then go over the nose so that way it's not super cakey because the nose tends to be one of the parts that get cakier the fastest but with this you have to like directly go on because hardly any product is being deposited. Like, do people use this powder foundation as just their foundation and like they think they're good to go? Or like, and if they wanna be, that's fine. But like, I feel like it's kind of closer to a setting powder than a foundation. Because really, like this is not, showing up hardly at all. I f don't think it's showing up on camera at all, uh, in person just barely, like, and it's not even really depositing much pigment, which uh, it could just be a very good match for my skin tone, but all it's really doing is like just barely filling the pores and giving it a slightly more even base, which like it's nice, that's what you want foundation to do, but it doesn't really, like I don't feel like it fills the pores enough to warrant being like, oh yeah, you know, that's a dope foundation. All right, now I kind of think it's almost showing up on camera better than it is in person. Who knows? But uh, that one was the MAC Studio Fix Powder. I'll probably give it another go another time, probably over top a liquid foundation though, or I would definitely use it for like a no makeup makeup look. Next, we're gonna go in with the, let's see, I believe it is probably an eyeshadow. So it's from a brand called Meech and Mia, and it doesn't actually specify. It just says M&M pressed and then the shade, which is taupe. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's an eyeshadow. I mean, I could probably use it for whatever I wanted. It might, from the looks of it, be a nice contour shade for someone who is not as pale as I am. We have that color. It's coming out lighter on camera, I feel like, in person. It looks a bit darker, but I'll go ahead and swatch that. Here's just one swipe of it. And here it is layered up a little. It's a beautiful color. It's more of a darker nude shade, almost a hint of like a pinkish purple maybe. We'll go ahead and put that on my eyes in just a moment. Next, however, we're gonna go and take a look at the eyeshadow brush that the bag comes with. It is a precision blending brush from the brand Luxie. Like a small fluffy brush. Uh, like definitely an eyeshadow type of fluffy brush. Small. So we will go in with this and probably apply the Meech and Mia eyeshadow to like the creases of my eyes. Picked up a nice amount of pigment. We will tap that, oh, that powder though. I don't know if you could see that, but still has a bit on there. We'll go in. I don't know if you can see that just yet. You can in person. It's not showing up very well on camera, but you can definitely see it in person. It is more of a subtle shade though. So I would use this for more of a low key or a natural look as opposed to a super dramatic look. I feel like in all of my Ipsy bags, I most of the shades have been very neutral and like 
more in the nudes kind of department. Um, like I haven't gotten very much many like fun colors or bright thing or like cool oh like that'll be fun you know like I mean granted it's all very nice it's just sometimes it's nice to have some fun stuff because my daily look is typically a um like a new like very similar to what is kind of going on on my face uh just a light foundation and like nude colors and browns is like an eyeshadow look I usually don't go crazy unless it's like a special occasion or I have an idea for a specific look. But I was really looking forward to getting stuff that like inspired me to want to try uh, more dramatic looks. And I haven't really gotten that quite yet out of the ipsies, but yeah. All right, so next we're gonna go back in and we have the Ciate London Glow 2 Highlighter. Says it's an illuminating illuminating powder highlighter and then the back of it so open that up oh okay I was expecting based on the box it was in to be an actual like compact so it is just the pan it is a nice neutral Again, a slightly darker color. Like I would almost maybe put that more towards a contour color than a highlight. Like obviously it's a highlighter, so it'll be more illuminating on the skin, I would assume. But the shade itself is a darker, which I've seen a lot on the market. Like especially, you know, like Jeffree Star Cosmetics has a ton of the darker ones. Uh, there are a bunch of other cosmetic companies that have started putting them out. But I haven't really seen a lot of people actually try them and put them to use. So I don't know how well they've been working out for anyone. But anyways, this is in the shade Moon Dust. And let me pull out a brush. I always forget to look at my main brush roll. So I always just have to go with like what I've already been using. And I never... I never have the right brushes. I'm kind of the worst with that, but it's fine. Have a nice have that. And that barely did anything. So we'll go. Now, here we go. You can definitely tell the difference this way with me going back and forth. Like this one definitely has a lot of highlight and this side does not have any. I tried like gently swiping and pretty much none of the pigment came up. So I really had to go in there like to get any product. And then I can kind of don't really care to tap it off because I don't want to lose all the pigment. So this one's more of a nice subtle side. To it very well just maybe the lighting in this room is more emphasized on this side but I'm gonna go in with another swipe over here to even that out a bit still didn't really work but whatever here but anyways that was a beautiful shape now that I've like taken the top layer off it doesn't look quite as dark I feel like and two on the skin, like it's really not pigmented at all. It's more just illuminating and you can see the shimmer and the highlighting effects, but it's not a specific color. Last but not least, we're gonna go back in and we have the Hanalee Lip Treatment in a peachy pink or a peach pink and have the back. Now, it does not have instructions on it, so I'm gonna look and see if there are any on here. It doesn't have complete instructions, but it does say tip. Apply on bare lips for a flush of color. Swipe on before matte colors so they go on smooth. Mix some with your favorite lipstick to make a hydrating stain. 
So I think it's literally just like a lip balm, but in more of a tube and probably more of a liquid form that I'm gonna try and put on my lips. Hopefully it works because my lips are so chapped right now. And I feel like I've said that for literally like every Ipsy video I've done so far, but like no matter what I do, my lips just stay chapped. And then as soon as I get them like to a point where they're almost okay, like I'll go to film a video and then they're just like, hey, we're gonna look like you have never drank in a sip of water in your life. And I'm like, oh, thanks. And you know, fuck you. So hopefully this works. We'll go ahead and put that on, open it up. And then I'm gonna put it on here to see what kind of texture and consistency it is. Oh. So it's more of like a cream consistency. It's a beautiful color. Ooh, it smells kind of nice too. So yeah, that's a beautiful color and it smells nice. I can't place my finger on what it is, if it's supposed to be a specific scent or if it's just the ingredients in the product. I'm gonna go with probably just the ingredients in the product. And I'm just gonna go in and apply that with my finger, I think. So we'll tap that. Again, it's a beautiful shade. The consistency did just go on pretty much just like I'm applying a lip balm or a lip gloss, I think is probably, it's very close to a lip gloss, but n like not a sticky lip gloss. When you put it on, it's just very smooth, the same consistency. It is a very pretty color. I feel like on my skin tone, it is a very nice, kind of nudish look, but it did emphasize how chapped my lips are. Like, like they're so chapped right now. Uh, they're so gross. Like thankfully from a normal length away, you can't tell, but on any up close, you can super tell. So hopefully the treatment part of it works. I just like keep wanting to apply more and hope that that'll help my lips become instantly less chapped because that's how products work. Anyways, those were all of the products in the February Ipsy bag. Pretty much like all of them, uh, except for the foundation, which would be okay if it was from a cruelty-free brand. MAC, jump on the bandwagon. Seriously, like why not? I don't understand why MAC isn't just cruelty free. Like pretty much if you go on their website, they're like, oh, we don't test on animals ever, blah, blah, blah. But if you like search for it, it does say that it will test on animals when required by foreign governments, which at this point is mainly China. Uh, if you want cosmetics to be sold in China, they are legally required to be tested on animals, which is a super outdated rule that needs to be overruled. Mac is like, no, we love animals. Like we're one of the leads in funding organizations and stuff to like help change animal testing policies and blah, blah, blah. But you still allow your products to be sold in China where they have to legally be tested on animals and their guys is, oh, well, we don't want to exclude any of our fans and like our customers which I get, but if they really wanted to get those products, they could, like they could get them on resale shops, they could have friends in the States purchase it and then send them out there. Like if they really want it, they would be able to find a way to get it. But Mac is just hypocritical. So I jump on the bandwagon so I can finally use your cosmetics. I'm over it. <laughs> because I don't believe in giving money to companies that test on animals. We were almost four for four with the completely cruelty-free bags. So the rest of the products in the bag were cruelty-free, including the lip treatment. I would more or less, you know, recommend all of these products. They're, you know, pretty great. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I had a blast hanging out with y'all. Peace.